Hello everyone, MasterZeon1001 here, and in this update log we'll be going over some of the changes that's happened between HardOps986 underscore 25 and underscore 26, which is this latest version. Recently me and ST3 were able to collaborate on a project to just kind of go through a quick little tool test, just seeing how the tools would perform in a project-based situation based on the current updates. And as a result, we were able to come up with a nice little slew of improvements to provide in this update that we felt would make everyone's lives a lot easier, solving things like material whiffing and also improving selection of bullying, making it much faster than ever. So without further ado, let's get into it. When it comes to hard ops, it can be a little difficult sometimes knowing if you're out of date or even knowing how to update and get the latest updates. Well, we've made as easy as possible with the hops button. By expanding on the hops button, it'll easily let you know if you need to update just by letting you know to update. There's three icons to represent all three markets. By clicking the icon, it'll take you to your market of preferred location and from there allow you to download the latest update. In the event that you don't know how to get the latest update, clicking this button will take you to a page telling you how to update your product. And then of course, just clicking the hops button will let you know if your product needs to be updated. So one of the first things I wanted to correct this update was the branding of Josh and Ryu as Blender Bros from CG Bros, which was incorrect. So I just wanted to be known that that was corrected. We apologize for the inconvenience. And also just letting you know that in the event that you're looking for links, the hops button is the go-to place along with the links at the very end to just take you everywhere you would need to go to get information and even get your product updated. So here I'm in Blender 2.83.8 as it shows in the bottom of the screen. And booleans here were fairly simple. This is before there were any changes to the boolean system. If I select these two objects and press Q and do difference, we see that it says difference, boolean operation complete, use a non-destructive workflow, as specified in the helper that you can set up in advance. And then of course, if we look at the modifier that was created, we see that there is no algorithm option here, and that's really the main difference between 2.83 and what you'll see going forward in 2.91 and 2.92. So if we minimize this, we're now in Blender 2.92, which is where I spend the majority of my time now. And so we have done some updates to make it a little bit more informational when it comes to setting up your Boolean. So if I press Control tilde, we can see that under Bool options, there's an option for fast and exact where you'll be able to set which Boolean algorithm you want to use. However, if you are using exact, just know that it will be a lot slower than fast. So fast is definitely recommended if you're just trying to do any of the previous workflows. But if you're familiar with what exact does or you want to experiment, then definitely give it a try. But just know that it will have more issues than normal. So if I were to duplicate this object and then shift select the main one and press Q, and choose difference, we see that now it tells us the algorithm that was ran. It even lets us know which 2.9 solver was being used. Pretty much the same information that we would get if we were looking at the modifier. And then of course, keep in mind that even if you set up a modifier to be fast, you can always use something like the hops drop down to just change it over to be exact. In fact, you can even change a multitude of modifiers to all go from fast to exact all at the same time. So just know that we are working to make it as um, useful as possible for you going forward using these later versions of Blender. So back in 2018, whenever we first transitioned over to Blender 2.8, one of the things we lost was the ability to have UV display under operations. But the first step to getting that back was to get auto unwrap to be back, which now is back. But without UV display, auto unwrap is just a little bit boring. So let's go ahead and minimize this. And we look over now at what we're looking at with the current version of hard ops. If we were to press Q and go under Mesh Tools and we use Auto Unwrap, we see that not only does it have a nice drawing going along with it, it also draws the UVs on screen. In addition to that, you can go under Operations now and there's an option for UV display just like the classic version of Hard Ops where now you can display UVs on the fly. The hotkey for this is QOU and anytime you press QOU, you can just look at the UVs for your selected object. The interesting thing about this is that even if you go in edit mode and you make a selection, you can press QOU and still preview UVs even in edit mode. So we'll press U, unwrap it, press QOU, and now we can see our UV result without having to bring up the UV window. So it's always been assistive for me for UVing on the fly for just setting up preliminary UVs before getting in and actually setting up the finishing touches. In a previous version of Hard Ops, we wanted to introduce a new type of window to assist with sculpt mode. 
And as of right now, it still isn't the full version of what we envision it to be. It'll take a little bit more time for it to actually become the true form that I actually have in mind for it, but we're still brainstorming some concepts with it, but I am excited to show what it'll be in this version. So initially you could go in sculpt mode and you can bring up this little panel that would help you just quickly select your brush on the fly for you to be able to do sculpt operations. However, the goal is of course to assist sculpt mode, but the idea of it generally is to make object mode be assisted by sculpt. So if we were to press Q and go into operations, we see that we have an option here for the brush menu. And if we click on this, it brings it up. We're still in object mode, but the moment that we click a brush, we're jumped into sculpt mode. And if we were to press Q, Q, we can actually bring up the brush list. And just by clicking the title at the top, we can quickly exit sculpt mode. And the idea with this is to try to introduce a type of way to model and sculpt at the same time. Keep in mind that I'm using a mouse this whole time. I shouldn't have to even say that, but yeah, I'm just using a mouse. I mean, of course I want to pull out a tablet and get fine with things, but also under settings, you can control click voxelize object and it'll bring up a grid that will let you choose the amount of voxels that happens. And then when you click and you go back under settings, you can actually voxelize the object. Then object draw will display showing what has happened. So if we were to press Q O Q, we can go back here, choose something like cloth, and just quickly begin sculpting cloth without any further ado. But the best part is that you can press Q, go back to brush, and just quickly exit to go back to object mode if needed to continue on with your modeling operations. So just kind of using sculpt for just a moment is the idea to try to make sculpt almost a modeling tool. Like I try to tell people, you know, I love grab brush. I mean, I love grab. And proportional edit with grab is also nice, but you know what's better than all of that is actually just grab brush. If we could just bring up grab brush for just a moment, perform an operation, then it would be so much better than pressing all those additional hotkeys. And that's something that I look forward to experimenting with you guys. In the alt M submenu is blank material. And blank material is one of those gems that if you read the tooltip, it'll give you some tips on how to get the most out of it by using the quick types. But one of the annoyances is the ability to use an edit mode when your object is deselected. Now, this is definitely a user error, but is a user error that I personally run into quite a bit. So if I were to deselect this object and tab into edit mode, I am now happy to announce that if you were to press Q and add a blank material, that you're now able to add a blank material, even if the object is deselected. And this is something that I would run into quite a bit as a sort of gotcha but was definitely something that I wanted to get resolved. So just know that now you can assign blank materials in edit mode, even if your selection is deselected, which is just quite an annoyance to run into. Right now, hops in the Q menu uses a type of literal naming in order to make it as easy for users to get acquainted with the various options and modifiers that are available with hard hops. However, new to this version is the prefix system that's been expanded on a little bit where basically by enabling it, you'll have numbers and letters in front of certain things in order to make them faster. For example, if I wanted to bevel, I could press QW to just quickly bevel. If I wanted to just quickly array, I could just press QE and I could just quickly array, press V to go into 3D and start arraying in between. And this is just a popular way for working if you're already fairly proficient with Blender and the Hops Q menu system. Um, we also worked harder to make it where QA would jump you to your modifiers as quickly as possible in all scenarios. So you can press QAL, for example, to quickly jump to your lattice. And I do look forward to all the suggestions and requests that will probably come in as a result of this because this is probably... Uh, one of the first steps we're taking towards trying to be more applicable to the QD gang who have made many suggestions towards different ways to add suffixes or prefixes to the beginning of certain items in order to make things faster for them. So this is for the QD gang. While we're discussing hotkey improvements, I'll we'll also talk about QOT for two shape. And if we scroll to wheel, we can jump back to cylinder. And now you'll notice that in the latest update that now the cylinder will be scaled to the balance of the object instead of terminating prematurely, which was an issue in the last release. We'll do the same thing here, just jump to two shape. We could use a space bar to just jump to cylinder and move the mouse. And we see that we're able to get the cylinder to fit. And the same thing with this, with just QOT space bar to cylinder and we're quickly able to place our cylinder. So just letting you know that cylinder has been improved in two shape V2. So for the purposes of this example, what I'll do is select everything in front of me, press control C and then press control N and make a new file. 
And as you know, under settings is managed, where if you hover over it, you see that there's an option to unify, evict, sync, and collect. I'm a big fan of unify, especially, but also evict. So we'll just delete this cube and press Control V. And we see that the shape is pasted along with all the subsequent bull shapes that we just don't want to see at this time. So just know that now you can select everything, press select everything, press Q, go under settings, choose manage. And now there's an F9 window where you can actually choose what operation you want to perform. So let's say you actually want to evict. You can just click on evict and the operation has been performed and you're good to go. At the beginning of Hard Ops 986, we introduced a feature in edit mode where you press Q and under ST3 mesh tools, there's an option called selection of Boolean. Whenever you use it, it'll show operator draw. And then you can press F9 to bring up a little window where you can actually adjust the insert depth and the extrude depth, which you cannot see very good unless you press Alt Z, then you can begin playing with the extrude depth. You could also play with the face offset. And then by pressing Alt Z, tabbing into object mode, you can see it working. Now, even though I use it kind of smoothly there, it's not actually a smooth operation with using this tool, which is something that we sought to resolve over the course of this release. So if we minimize this blender and we press Control N and go to a new file, if we press Q and select two faces in edit mode, we can press Q, go under ST3 mesh tools and choose selection of Boolean. And we see that we're able to interactively adjust the amount of offset and then we're able to click where it'll jump into a see-through mode automatically and you're able to begin cutting into it. And it's been sped up uh, exponentially to be multiple times faster than it was before. Previously, the version was a little bit slower and would have a little bit of a stutter whenever you'd be extruding inward and now you're able to just use it smoothly. In addition to this, similar to box cutter, you can now press A and switch it over to a make mode where you can now add a panel on top of a surface and then click to apply and you've basically converted that edge selection into a panel sitting on top of the surface. So in celebration of box cutter getting the ability to taper, we also have taper added to hop. So to show it in action, I will control V paste my clipboard buffer, and then I will select the object, have it as my main selection, press Q, go under settings, and we'll manage and use F9 to just choose to evict what's not needed. So we have this as our selection. So with a single selection under mesh tools, you can go under taper and you can actually choose to taper an individual object and then roll the wheel in order to choose which axis you would like to taper said object. So we'll choose this object, we'll taper this one as well. We'll select a different object and also choose to taper it, rolling the wheel, choosing what axis we would like to taper and continuing on just tapering each object individually. However, in addition to being able to do things individually, you can select a multitude of objects as you see here and under taper, you can see that shift clicking will allow you to taper a multitude of objects at the same time using one lattice and then rolling the wheel will allow you to choose what side you're able to choose to taper these. And so this was something I found really essential to be added to hops. I found myself wanting to taper objects after the fact and then be able to go in and actually add additional points to the lattice as you see me doing here in order to make fine adjustments and then just add even more segments to just smooth things out. So just letting you know that taper is now a part of hops as a celebration of box cutters recent updates and I hope everyone's able to have some enjoyment with it. In previous versions of hops whenever you would work destructively you could press control tilde and just set the workflow to destructive which will affect boolean. So keep an eye on the collections on the side. I'll shift D duplicate this cube, shift select the main one and press Q and then click on difference. And we see that while the object is gone, there still is this extra collection that just isn't needed. And that's something that's always irked me just a little bit. So if we go into this newer version of hard ops, we can press control tilde, jump over to destructive for just a moment and shift D duplicate and then do the same operation, we see that there's no extra collect collection being created. And this should make operations a lot smoother if you're one of those users trying to work in destructive mode without any sort of residue left behind. Wire draw is one of those things you'll see when you use select operators inside of hard ops. For example, if I were to go under the Boolean sub panel and choose to bring back some of these objects, you can see them shining in orange before they fade away to their black counterparts. And this is something that was added by us to make things a little bit more visual for users to follow along on the fly. 
Also, if you were to press Q and use modifier scroll, it also is the same story where basically scrolling through will show you an orange outline of what the shape is that you're bringing back before you actually bring it back. It also extends into hops tool where if you hover over each dot, it will actually show you the shape that you're about to bring back whenever you click the dot. And this is just something we added to just try to make it a little bit smoother for users to use. However, sometimes whenever you're using an operation like say smart apply, it will show the wire, but sometimes as you continue working, it will no longer show the wire. And this was a bit of an odd bug. It wasn't something severe, but it was something that I wanted to get resolved. And I'm happy to announce that there's been improvements made towards ensuring that the longer that you work, the more that the wire display continues to show. So hopefully there'll be less situations of it actually fading away without you having to restart your scene. It's just a small aesthetic, but I do want it to be rather consistent. In closing, I just want to say, whenever it comes to Hops Cutter, I am personally committed to it being at its best at all times. And as a result, that results in us putting out more updates than the average person would expect to see in their lifetime. And this is because, you know, perfection is unobtainable. However, I do find quite a bit of joy in the pursuit of it because it's resulted in a tool unlike any tool that's ever been seen before. While there may seem like there's a lot like it, we do strive to remain fairly unique in our approaches and think outside the box rather than just digging in the well. Um, I often say internally that our goal isn't to be like anything or anyone, but to find problems and solve them and to solve problems that personally mean things to us and to our users. Um, we're not aiming at situations that we're not encountering to add additional bloat for scenarios that we may not ever run into. These tools are refined to be um, basically our approach to a professional pipeline in Blender as far as hard surface working in an optimized fashion. And I feel that we've succeeded in that manner, but our work still continues and there's still more work to be done. So to the new users out there who probably look at us and they're like, wow, these guys are insane. These guys just are out of control. Just know that, you know, at the very beginning in 2015, when this tool was first made and was $5, I promised an experience unlike any other. And with every new customer that jumps on, I still feel that same obligation to provide that same experience that we provided back then of a tool that would grow and advance with you, the user, that as you improve, that there's always more to it. You know, that it's like a video game. Um, there's some video games out there that are front loaded at the beginning to be fully cinematic, but as you get deeper into the game, there is no further content at the end once you're level 99. This tool is built to be there for you, whether you're level one, but definitely there for you if you're level 99. And as you go up the levels, the tools open up more and more to you as your brain begins to put together different combinations of ways to use the various tools at your disposal to pull off the results that you have in your mind. So I do hope that everyone, you know, sticks in there, tries watching the hops extended content that explains all the tools in depth to try to get a better understanding. but. Um, you know, motivationally, I do hope that everyone's learning something from these videos and getting something out of their hops experience, whether they're picking a feature a day to learn and try to better understand or just expanding on their existing pipeline using our tool set. But with that, I'll close out this video and I thank everybody for watching.